Ovulation means releasing a matured egg. Your ovaries are releasing a matured egg. Now, that only happens once in a cycle, once in a month. This is how it works. Once your, once your ovary releases that egg, that egg only has 24 hours to stay alive. If you don't do the deed, if you miss your ovulation day, after 24 hours, that egg is going to die off. It's just going to die off. So you have to wait for another cycle for your body to release an egg again and then for you to get pregnant. But this is the, this is the good news. If you are trying to conceive, you have to increase your chances by doing the deed, staying intimate during your fertile window. Hello, thanks for the video. I saw my period on the 16th of March. Does that mean I will see it again on the 16th of April? And when will my ovulation start? My cycle length varies. The longest is 30 and the shortest is 25. When will my ovulation be? Hello, thank you for this video. But I am confused about something. My lecturer said, my lecturer said that 14 days, which is five days before your ovulation and five days after your ovulation is your fertile window. Please clarify me on this. My cycle length varies. It is 30, 25, 28, 27. How do I calculate my ovulation? And so on and so on and so on. Hey ladies, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another video. As you guys can see, today I have the board and that means I am, we are going to be doing some math. We are going to be doing some calculations in here. I want to try my best to explain again to you guys how to calculate your ovulation, the length of your cycle and your ovulation. Today I'm going to go in depth. I'm going to try to use these questions to, to make this video, to answer your questions, okay? And also in this video, I am going to answer the question a lot of you have been asking. When exactly should you do the date if you are trying to conceive and how often should you do it one time on your ovulation day or before your ovulation day or throughout the week? Those are some questions I have been getting so I'm going to try my best to answer it all in this video. And if you are new to my channel, you're very welcome here. My name is Nosa. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you find today's video helpful and I would really love for you to subscribe if you did find this video helpful, okay? Alright guys, so I have all my... I have all my markers here. This video is will only help you if you have a regular cycle. A regular cycle. Every month, your cycle comes. Your cycle comes when you're expecting it. It may not come on the exact day you're expecting it, but at least a day before or a day after. Those are the people that this video is meant for. If you have an irregular cycle, I already have a video on that, okay? We don't have to do that today. So just go watch that video and help yourself. Now, so um, this is my calendar. I drew out the month of June and the month of July. So I noticed from the questions that a lot of you ladies were asking, there is this confusion about, you know, what your ovulation day would be if your period started from one month and continued into another month. So let's say your period started in, your, your period started on the 30th of, of January and continues all the way to the second or third of February. So you had your period from one month into another month. And a lot of you were like, how will I calculate my ovulation? Because in my last video, I only used one month. I calculated my period, my ovulation, everything with one month. So a lot of you were like, I, okay, I don't understand. My period started at the end of the month. So how do I calculate my ovulation? So let us do it here with this, uh, with these two calendars, okay? So let us say, this is the month of June. So let us say my period started on the 28th of June. 28th of June. What you're gonna do again, just like the last video, is to cycle that day. The day your period started. The first day of bleeding. Cycle it on your calendar. After you do that, put your pen down, put your marker down, don't do anything. Just cycle that first day that you bleeded and leave your calendar alone. What you're going to do now is to wait. Wait for your next period to come. If you bleeded for two days, three days, four days, it, it is irrelevant to this calculation. The number of days you bleeded for, it is completely irrelevant to this calculation too. To calculate your ovulation, nobody cares about how many days you bleeded for, okay? The only thing you need to know is the first day of your period, the first day your period started. So you have that day marked or cycled in your calendar and then you drop your pen and then we wait. Wait for your next period to come. Now, pick up your pen again on the day that your next period starts. So let's say your next period started on the 23rd of July. This is going to be the length of your cycle. 
According to experts and science, the length of your cycle, the length of a woman's cycle starts from the first day of her period, the first day that she starts bleeding, to the day before her next period starts. The day before her next period starts. We're going to do it here. So your period started on the 28th of June. Write one on the 28th. Write one right there. If your period started on the 27th, the same thing. If your period started on the 26th, the same thing. If your period started on the 1st, the same thing. Just cycle it and write one. If your period started on the 28th. Now we have it cycled and we have one. The next day is 29th, 29th of June. You're gonna write two right under it, two. The next date is 30th, you're gonna write three. Continue into the next month. Yes, we are now in the month of July. Just continue. The next day is 1st of July. Come here, write four, like that. The next day will be five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and then 25. 25. Remember what I said before, the length of your cycle is the first day that your period started to the day before your next period starts. It is not to the, the, the first day of your next period, no. The day before your next period starts. So that means this person, this woman has a 25 day cycle. This is a 25 day cycle. The next day her period started is 23rd of July. That day will be considered as another one again. That is the beginning of another cycle. And she can start counting again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, to August when the next period will start, okay? So from the first day to the day before your next period starts. That is the length of a woman's cycle. And let me quickly stress this again. You have to wait for that next period to start before you start counting. If your next period has not come, you can't count anything. You can't count one, two, three, no. So only, only mark the first day that your period started, cycle that date on your calendar, and then wait. Someone asked me this question. She was like, how did you know when your next period was going to come? You don't know. I don't know when my next period is going to come. So what I do and what you want to do is to wait. The first day your next period comes, pick up your pen and go and start counting. Con you know, from where you cycled uh, day one, that's from your last period, start counting two, three, four, and, and the number of days between that last period and your new period that you have started will be the length of your cycle. Okay, so now that you know how to calculate your menstrual cycle, the length of your menstrual cycle, we're going to go on to calculate your ovulation. How do you calculate your ovulation? The first thing I need you, you ladies to know is this number. I want you to put this number in your head. The number 14, 1 and 4. And according to science, a woman's ovulation usually happens 14 days before her next period starts. 14 days before she starts bleeding again, okay? So I have a 26-day cycle. I'm going to write it here, 26. The next thing is to minus, subtract 14 from 26. 14 because that is the day that science say I will be ovulating. So 26 minus 14. The answer will be 12. So this woman has a 25 day cycle, okay? She has a 25 day cycle. What she's going to do to get her ovulation day, she's going to subtract 14. 25 minus 14, the answer would be 11. 11. Now, where is the 11 in this calendar? Where is the 11? Not 11th of, of July. Not 11th of July. The 11 that we wrote somewhere, that small number 11 that we wrote somewhere, that is day 11 of her menstrual cycle. Where is that day 11? Right here. It is under 8. Under number 8. 25 minus 14 is 11. The 11 is her predicted ovulation day. On this day, she's most likely to release an egg and if the egg gets fertilized by sperm, she would get pregnant. Now, according to experts and science again, 
Day 11 is not the only day that she could get pregnant. She can get pregnant before that day or even after that day. And the reason is because ovulation is not always consistent. I can say that for a fact, okay? Uh, studying my body and my cycle. Sometimes ovulation can come a little early. Sometimes it can come a little late. So what does, what does the expert want us to do? They want you to add two numbers. The two numbers in front of your ovulation day and the two numbers after. Okay, we're also going to do that right here. So this is day 11, the predicted day of her ovulation. What are the days in front of it? We have day 10 and day 9. So 9 and 10. And what are the days after? We have 12 and 13. So 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13. I hope this is not confusing. 11 that is your ovulation day what are the two days in front of 11 9 and 10 what are the two days after 11 12 and 13 put all those five days together and that is your fatal window within these five days within these five days this woman can ovulate she's most likely to release an egg and ovulate yes releasing an egg means ovulation okay so she can either ovulate on the 9 or the 10 or 11 or 12 or 13 but the day that is most guaranteed is still day 11 it's still day 11 so this is how you calculate your ovulation get the length of your cycle minus 14 whatever that number is is your predicted ovulation day and don't forget the two days in front and the two days after that predicted ovulation day you can still you can you can ovulate in either of those days please you want to go watch that video to see how to calculate the full length of your fertile window there are actually more days that you can get pregnant here okay i don't want to go into it because i already made that video okay you guys the weather is really funny today so anywhere the sun goes i move because i want the natural light for this video Okay, so now that you know how to calculate your menstrual cycle and your ovulation, let us now answer the next question, which is how often or when should you be doing the deed? When should you actually have sex if you are trying to conceive? And how often, how many days should you be, you know, having sex if you are trying to conceive? And the answer is very obvious. Your ovulation day, of course, because that is the day your ovaries are going to release an egg. And once the egg meets the sperm, then uh, conception can occur, pregnancy can occur. So of course, your ovulation day is your best chance, your highest chance of conceiving if you are trying to conceive. Now, I mentioned that there are some other days to mark in your calendar, which are, you know, the two days before your ovulation day and the two days after your ovulation day. And if you watch my other video, I talked about more days that you can add to your fertile window to give you the full length of your fertile window. Within all of those days, you can, you know, you can just be having fun, having sex, and thereby increasing your chances of conceiving. But to answer your question, apart from your ovulation day, all of these days that are marked red, all of these days that fall within your fertile window are days for you to try to conceive, days for you to have sex. So it is up to you to figure out what particular days you want to use. You can go all five days, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or you can choose to do it every other day. So you do it on Monday, skip Tuesday, do it on Wednesday, skip Thursday, do it on Friday, skip Saturday, like that. As long as they all fall within your fertile window. Another thing you also want to, uh, you also want to take note of is your peak day, your peak day. So the day before your ovulation day is considered as your peak day, your peak fertility. If a woman is trying to conceive, her peak day and her ovulation day are the two best days, the highest chances of conceiving. In fact, if you don't have the strength to do it all five days of the week, then make sure that peak day and your ovulation day, you are doing it. <laughs> your peak day and your ovulation day. So in this case, this woman's ovulation day is the 11th. 11 day of her cycle now day 10 will be her peak day so i'm going to cycle day 10 just as like this and i'm going to write it here peak 
Peak fertility, that's another day that you want to pay attention to. You want to actually mark it in your calendar. So what happens on your peak day is that the luteinizing hormone in your body rises. It gets to its peak. And that luteinizing hormone is needed. It is needed to increase for you to release an egg. Once you get your peak, once you get to peak fertility, once that hormone gets to its peak, it means that your ovaries are going to release an egg within the next 12 to 24 to 32 to 48 hours. So once you have seen your peak, then know that ovulation is coming either the next day or the day after. Your peak day is usually the day before your ovulation day. It can also be two days before your ovulation day. So your peak day and your ovulation day are the two most important day in your fertility if you are trying to conceive or even avoid pregnancy. So that's another thing to pay attention to. And if you don't know the signs and symptoms of peak fertility or luteinizing hormone rising in your body, I have videos, okay? I have videos that, you know, you can see some physical signs. You can see it through your cervical mucus, your temperature. You will have a high sex drive. You may be very cranky, very moody. You may have all these cravings. You may even be breaking out like pimples. There are so many ways for you to know that ovulation is approaching. So once you find your peak day, then you know that ovulation is approaching and within these two days please get your partner and get to work but if i were you i would start trying before my ovulation day before your ovaries release that egg you want to make sure that there's a lot of sperm in there already you want that sperm to be in your in your reproductive tract you want the sperm to be there waiting for the egg to come so that once you ovulate once an egg is released the sperm is already there and it will go on to do its job so when should you have sex and how often should you be doing it have sex during your fertile window and throughout your fertile window five days a week seven days a week every other day your peak day your ovulation day make sure you use all of these days make sure you maximize your chances during this period to conceive if you are trying to conceive and let me offer a little encouragement if you do this whole thing we just talked about for one cycle and you don't get a positive result don't lose hope try it again the next month continue this is the only formula you want to continue to try this method just make sure to know when you are most fertile your peak day and your ovulation day your fertile window and try during that period to increase your chances of conceiving oh my god the sun is moving again the sun is moving again i have to move i have to move okay you guys can see it's becoming dark and i don't have enough time to stand here waiting for the sun so let us move again okay so there's this other question that i want to quickly answer someone asked how many times can a woman ovulate in one month or in one cycle so from my understanding i could be wrong okay i am not a scientist but from my understanding from all the researches i have made it is not it is not possible for you to ovulate twice in a month now i know why you asked that question because you guys can see that it is possible to have two periods two menstruations in one month which depends on the length of your cycle so your period can start at the beginning of the month that period can that cycle can end and then another cycle can start again by the end of that month like this woman here another cycle started on the 23rd of july 23rd of july she started bleeding again now she's not going to complete that cycle in this month of july no she needs another 25 days so what that means is that this cycle is going to continue all the way to, to august and then she's going to ovulate in august she needs 25 days so within that 25 days which is going to be in august that is when she's going to ovulate again so there's only one ovulation in this cycle so yes you can have two periods in one month but can you have two ovulations in one month that according to my research is not possible okay ovulation means releasing a matured egg your ovaries are releasing a matured egg now that only happens once in a cycle once in a month now this is how it works once your once your ovary release that egg that egg only has 24 hours to stay alive so that egg is going to be there for 24 hours waiting for the sperm to come if you don't do the deed if you miss your ovulation day after 24 hours that egg is going to die off it's just going to die off so you have to wait for another cycle for your body to release an egg again and then for you to get pregnant but this is the this is the good news sperm can stay in a woman's body longer than an egg than her egg 
sperm can stay in a woman's body from three to five days yes the sperm can stay alive just just waiting for the egg to come like where is this egg i'm gonna be here for only five days so within um you know within your fertile window when you know you're going to ovulate you want to start trying you want to start being intimate having sex with your partner once the egg comes the sperm is going to be like finally i can get to do my job and live here the sperm is going to fertilize the egg and that is how a woman gets pregnant but if you miss your fertile window if you miss your ovulation if you did not ovulate at all if you did not do the deed during your fertile window then the sperm is going to come stay in there and then also die off so that is why it is important for you to do this calculation and know the full length of your fertile window and once you know that you are covered you are covered you don't have to do a lot of work okay but and yeah yeah ladies this is how you calculate your ovulation it is very simple very very simple if you don't understand this play this video again watch it all over again pause it you know try to meditate on it you know try to, to just slow it down watch this video at least two times at least two times and you will understand and when while you are watching this video get yourself a notebook and a pen and you know do the calculations along don't just watch it and expect to grab everything into your head by the time you are done no get your own notebook and start calculating and another thing i will encourage you to do is to do this you know monitor your body study your cycle for at least three months don't just do this in January and then by February you are trying to you are trying to conceive. What if your period changes? What if you have a varying cycle length? You are good, you are going to be trying on the day you think you are ovulating and guess what? You are not even ovulating on that day. So do you know study your cycle for at least 3 months. Then by the fourth month, you have an idea of what your cycle is, what when you are ovulating, and then you can maximize your chances of conceiving. So you want to watch my other video, you know, where I talked about trying to conceive with a regular cycle. I said a regular cycle, but what I really mean is a varying cycle length, okay? So please watch that video if you have a varying cycle length and if you have an irregular cycle and use that method to calculate your 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 your, your menstrual cycle and your ovulation so yeah guys that will be it for today's video i hope i answered all your questions if you have any more questions regarding this topic how to calculate your just leave it in the comment section uh, maybe i will do another video to answer you guys i can tell you that as a young girl i, I never knew these things i had no idea in fact I, I had to learn these things when i became a mom when i started having my my kids because this is my method of contraceptive this is what i use anyway let's not go into that uh, so yeah please help me share this video and give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful to you subscribe to my channel if this video was also helpful to you i would really appreciate that don't forget to watch all the other videos i have referenced i think they would really you know they will help with more clarity and yeah thank you guys so much for being here i appreciate you all and i will see you in my next one